Hey there, Power Platform Enthusiasts. Steph and Superfloof here. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're starting a new series, Power Apps 101. Superfloof and I will be your guides as we dive into the wonderful world of creating Power Apps one step at a time from start to finish. In today's bite-sized adventure, we're going to start at the very beginning, the heart and soul of your Power App, the layout, header, and welcome message. By the end of this video, you'll have a responsive design with a slick header and a welcome message that'll make your users feel right at home. It's like decorating your front porch, but way cooler. Ready to roll up your sleeves and make your Power App pop? Awesome! But before we get started, do us a favor, smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that bell so you won't miss any of the gems I'm about to drop in our Power Apps 101 series. All right, my Power Apps peeps, grab some snacks, caffeine, and your cat or puppy, we don't discriminate. Get comfy and let's transform your power app into a user magnet. Ready? Let's do this. As always, let's start with the finished product first. Here we have a modern responsive design. We have a logo, text, and the user's image. If we click on the text, here we get into the code and I'll make sure to put all of these in the comments as well. The text here will change from good morning to good afternoon depending on the time of day of the user. So it's just another little step of making your users feel welcome and for people that may be concerned that they're seeing other people's data, this is a way of showing them that this app is showing them what they're supposed to see. Here we are on my desktop. I've gone to make.powerapps.com. Microsoft likes to give you multiple ways of doing things. I'm a lazy IT person. If I only have to click a mouse once or twice, as opposed to doing multiple steps, that's the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to show you two ways of doing this. The long way first, then we'll go back and I'll show you the better way. So if we were to start off, normally you would go to create, you would select a blank app, and then from here, a blank canvas app. I'm going to call it welcome. And from here, we're just going to select temp tablet and hit create. Now, if we wanted to, from here, create a responsive design, first we would have to create a new screen and we would select the responsive design, the header footer. And then we would have to come up here and change the display to turn off scale to fit. Now, why that's important is if we play the app right now and let's pretend that I have an iPhone X, you see that it doesn't really respond. It's kind of responsive to the size of the screen, but not really. And here it looks a little bit better. Now, if we go to the same app, go to settings again, display, scroll down, turn scale to fit off, close, play the app again, go back to our cell phone. You see now it's responsive. We have a fixed size header, a fixed size footer, and then the main section in the middle changes appropriately. Well, now I have to go in and I have to delete. Let me make this a little bit smaller. I have to delete screen one, rename screen two. I'm a lazy IT person. I don't want to do all those steps if I don't have to. So let's not save this, go back to my desktop and go to home. You'll notice that now Microsoft has given us start with a page design right up front and center. If you click on that, look what we have here. We have the option of creating all of these different items. We could have a gallery connected to external data, which is SharePoint, Excel, and I think that's SQL, and a gallery connected to a table, which would be Dataverse. Down here is the one we're going to focus on, though, today. Responsive, because today, Power, Power Apps 101, we're just doing a header. If I select the Info button, it tells me what we have. We have a fixed height header, a fixed height footer, and then the sen center section automatically changes. Let's select this one. And here we have one screen, and if we go into settings, scale to fit is already turned off. Let's play the app, pretend that we're an iPhone X, rotate it, and we already have the start of a good responsive design. Make this a little bit smaller. Best practice, this is a good habit to get into. Rename things as you go because it becomes a pain when you do it later. So we're gonna call this the home screen and I'm gonna expand out what we have. Our header container here, that's all we're working on today. We're going to add a logo, some text that fills the screen, and then a user image. So let's get started with the logo. I've already uploaded my logo. However, if you needed to do that, you would come to the left side here, expand out the menu, 
and we can see we have an option for media. Get used to keeping this minimized, it'll give you more real estate. So I can just select the icon, click upload and upload your media. Again, I am a lazy IT person, so I could come up here to insert and find the image. I could scroll or I could type, select it from here, select the image, and then I would have to come in and assign my logo to that image. I don't want to do that. I'm going to delete that um, item, come back down here, multiple ways of doing things. I can delete. I'm going to go back to my media and just click on it. There it enters it perfectly for us. Easy peasy. So you'll notice how the logo has entered itself at a height of 100 and a width of 100, standard, but it's outside of the limits of our uh, container. Now I could come here and try and shrink it, but you see how it's not letting me. So for right now, I'm going to set the height to match our container, which is 75, and I could get the container height by clicking on it and seeing here the height of 75. Come in here, I'm gonna rename the image to IMG. Again, use whatever naming convention you like, and logo. First rule of Power Apps is my first rule of SharePoint. Don't panic. I renamed it, the logo disappeared. All you have to do is come up here and make a little change and it'll refresh. It'll give you a force. And then the next thing that we wanna do is add in some text. We want to have the welcome message. I'm gonna add a text label and it looks odd, but we'll fix it here in a second. And then I'm gonna grab our code and enter this in here. So I will put all of this in the description down below. Basically what we're doing here is if now, if the text of now has AM or PM, if it equals AM, that means that it's morning. So we're going to offer the user good morning and then we're taking their name and we're splitting it on the full name, which in my environment is Stephanie Marshall. This may not work same, same in yours, so you may have to tweak it a little bit. And then if it's PM, we're gonna have good afternoon. If you wanted to get more fancy with this, you could. And then the third thing that I like to put in my headers is uh, the image of the user. So we do have to do an image here. And if I type in image and select it, you see how it's stacking everything right up on top of each other. I'll get into that in a minute. Our image here is going to be user and then as I'm typing, Intelligence Sense is helping me out. As I enter a period, I have options, image, email, all of these things. I could use my mouse and select. I can also hit the down arrow on my keyboard and hit tab and it'll finish it for me. There's an image of me with one of my kitties. I'm going to change that height to 75 and I'm gonna change the width to 75. And the reason that I'm doing that is because then I'm going to scroll down and I'm gonna change the border radius to 75. Again, this is just something that I like to do. I think it looks a little bit nicer. Now, if we were to play this app, everything is stacked on the left. We're gonna turn this into an iPhone. Everything's showing. We don't really want everything to show because you see how as you rotate, you get more or less screen real estate. So what we're gonna do is back into the app, minimize this to fit the screen. This section here, I'm going to turn on flexible width. It's one of the options here. Now you see it sets itself to fill the space. I'm gonna hit play again, and we can see how as we rotate, good afternoon, Stephanie is filling the space. My image is at the right and the logo's on the left. Dynamically does all this work for us. There's still more we have to do here. I'm not liking really how the text is laying out. It's not filling the entire space. So on the header container, you can select different options here. I'm gonna select center and center. Now in the text, I want this to fill the space. So I'm gonna do this so it's centered dynamically for me so I don't have to do a lot of work. And then I'm gonna select center here as well. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's look at the finished app one more time. In the iPhone 8 up and down format, we see the logo and we see the text. Now as we rotate the screen, we see that the text size changes. Let's change it to an iPad mini. You see how the user image shows up. Let's rotate that around, the image goes away. Let's look at how we do that next. In our app, we're going to take the logo and we're gonna leverage a switch statement. So for the width of the logo, I can either select the word width here 
or I can come up to the drop down and select width. This is the logic we're going to use. We're going to switch on the home screen size. Remember, I've named my screen home screen. And if the screen size is small, then make it 100 wide. If it's medium, make it 200 wide. And if it's anything else, make it 300. I'll put a link in the description below to what those sizes mean as of today from Microsoft. Who knows what that might could be tomorrow. We're going to do the same thing with text. First, let's make it bold. No matter what size the screen is, I want this text to be bold. We're going to leverage a switch statement on the font size here. Right now it's just set to 13. I'm going to paste in my switch statement. Again, off of the home screen, size. If the screen size is small, I want the text to be 16. If it's medium, 24. And if it's anything else, make it 28. Now for the user image, we're going to do things a little different. We don't really care about the visibility of the user image. We don't want to change the size, but the visibility. Again, these are just rules of thumb that I have found work. You can do whatever you like with this. If the screen size doesn't equal small and the screen size doesn't equal medium, show this. So this is only going to show if we have a larger screen. No need to have it any other time. That's it. There we have a fully responsive header that depending on the device and the orientation, we get different results making it responsive for the ever-changing user interface experience that our end users are having, either on a desktop or a mobile in the field. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.